Well, hi, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wasserman, and today we are beginning our study of Unit 6, which will primarily deal with division. Um, we are in our homelinks, uh, Unit 6, Lesson 1, Solving Extended Division Facts. Emphasis on the word extended. Let's take a look at problem number one, shall we? It says that the basic fact is 16 divided by 4. We need to now figure out what would be the extended fact. Okay, now if we take a look at this fact triangle here, you'll see that we have a 4 and we have 160. So we're going to just ignore this 0 for just a moment and concentrate on 16 divided by 4. Now, if you recall, multiplication and division are interrelated. They are kind of mirror images of each other. So for every multiplication fact, there is a division fact that is kind of its mirror opposite. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look at this array, shall we? I have four rows of dots organized into four columns. Okay, so that means for every row I have four dots and there are four rows. Four times four gives me 16. So my basic fact here, it, when it's presented as a division problem, is basically a multiplication problem with a missing factor. Four times something gives me 16. Well, that something happens to be 4. 4 times 4 gives me 16, as shown in this array. Okay. Now, when we think about dividing, uh, what we're basically doing is we are taking a number and then we're breaking it down into smaller groups. Like so, I have 16 dots here, and I can divide them into 4 groups, like so. And within each group, I have one, two, three, four dots. So 16 divided into four groups would give me four in each group. So that is the reverse of this multiplication problem. 16 divided by four gives me four. Now, when we talk about extended uh, division facts, it's the same as extended multiplication facts, which you might remember back in unit two, around when we were talking about units of time, when we were trying to figure out how many minutes were in, say, five hours, we would have to multiply five times six tens, because 60 minutes are in an hour, and multiplying five times 60 is just like multiplying five times six with a zero thrown in there. And that's what we're doing here. We have four times something gives me 160. 4 times something gives me 160. Now, represented as a division problem, it reads 160 divided into 4 groups would give us how many groups? Well, as you can see up here, 4 times 4 gives me 16 with no zeros. So if I were to multiply 4 times 4 with an extra 0, or 40, I would get that 160. So on both sides of the equation, or both sides of that equal sign, I have a zero. I have a zero here and a zero here. So 4 times 4 gives me 16. 4 times 4 tens, or 40, gives me 16 tens, otherwise known as 160. Okay. Now I could draw an array to demonstrate that, but that would mean I would have to lay out 160 dots in four rows, and each of those rows would have 40 dots. This is where arrays start to get wieldy and cumbersome. So just knowing that I'm counting tens, okay, is very helpful. So when I'm extending a division fact, I basically first have to think about the basic multiplication fact, and then reverse it into a division fact, and then uh, include some zeros. So What's my basic fact here? Well, I need a division problem that involves 4 and 24. I'm going to ignore this one zero for now. So I'm asking myself, 4 times what gives me 24? Well, I bet you already know that that is 6. So my basic division fact is 24 divided into 4 groups. It would give me 6 in each group. Now, since I have a 0 right here behind the 24, making it 24 tens, also known as 240, I'm going to extend that fact by basically dropping a 0 right here, 24 tens, 
divided by 4 is going to give me 6 tens, otherwise known as 60. So again, I have a 0 on one side of my equation, or the left side of the equal sign, and I have 1 0 on the right-hand side, which is also 6 tens, otherwise known as 60. Okay. So if I know that 4 times 6 gives me 24, I can then solve 24 divided into 4 groups gives me 6. If I know that 240 is divisible by 4, just like 24 is divisible by 4, I can come up with that missing quotient. Okay. Let's try one more, shall we? You'll notice that problem 4 has 4 uh, parts that all look very similar. 36 divided by 4, 360 divided by 4, 3,600 divided by 4, and then 360 divided by 40. Okay? So the first thing we have to do is we have to remind ourselves what times 4 gives me 36. So I have a fact triangle set up here. I've got my uh, product at the top, 36. I've got one of the factors, 4. Now I've got to remind myself what times 4 gives me 36. Well, at this point, you've probably already remembered that it's 9. 9 times 4 gives me 36, so I'm just going to plug in 9 right here. Okay, so my basic fact is 36 divided into 4 groups would give me 9 in each group, because 9 times 4 is 36. Now, when I look at 4b, I see that there is a 0 to deal with. 36 tens divided by 4 would give me... 9 tens, otherwise known as 90. Now what that would look like in my fact family triangle is that I would have to add a 0 behind my 9, but then I would have to add a 0 up top behind my 36. Because when I introduce a factor of 10 down here at the bottom of my triangle, I have to involve tens or a factor of 10 up at the top. Okay. So basically all I'm doing is I'm just remembering to add a zero. So when I get to 4c, 3,600 divided by 4, all I'm doing here is I'm remembering that 4 times 9 is 36. So 4 times 900, or 9 with two zeros, would give me a product of 3,600, or 36 with two zeros. So I reverse it. 3,600 divided into four groups would give me 900 in each group. So as long as I remember to count my zeros on each side of the equation, I'll be okay. So there's two zeros on the left, so there has to be two zeros on the right. Okay. Then when I have uh, 360 divided by four tens, or 40, I'm still going to get... 9, okay, because 9 times 40 gives me 360, or 9 times 4 tens gives me 36 tens, okay? So as long as you can remind yourself of the single-digit multiplication facts that we studied um, way back in Unit 2, and we can apply some zeros, we can uh, work out these extended division facts. Uh, Here's a hint. The inside back cover of your math journal has a multiplication and divisions uh, fact table. You can use that to both uh, find the product of a multiplication problem and either the divisor or the quotient to a division problem. Okay. So try out these other three problems, number three, number five, and number six. As long as you can remember what times 9 gives me 18 or what times 7 gives me 42, you'll be in good shape. Okay. Then lastly, we have some multiplication problems down at the bottom. Okay. Let's take a look at problem number 9, shall we? 905 times 7. And I'm going to use partial products as my strategy this time. I'm going to rewrite that problem vertically so I can remind myself that 905 times 7 is really just saying 900 times 7 and 5 times 7. I have to ignore the 0 in the tens place value because 0 times anything is going to give me a product of 0. 
Okay, so 9 times 7 gives me 63. So 9 with 1, 2, 0 is behind it will give me 63 with 1, 2, 0 is behind it, otherwise known as 6,300. And of course, 5 times 7 is 35. So now all I have to do is add those two partial products together. And really all I'm just doing is bringing down the, uh, the whole number in each column. And that gives me a total of 6,335. Okay. So this should start to feel familiar, especially as we think about the learning that we did in Unit 2. But, you know, since it's division, it gives it a little twist. So if uh, this starts to get confusing or if you uh, aren't quite sure about this whole multiplication division relationship, uh, the person you need to talk to is your math teacher. They are here to help you, uh, whether you are a live, in-person student coming to class every day or if you're watching this video uh, from home as part of a virtual learning experience. There are ways to contact your math teacher. You need to advocate for yourself that you need help. I hope this video was helpful for you, and uh, until we uh, talk again, friends, have a good day. Thanks.